Outing. As they exit the violin shop, Britt turns to face Eddie. Eddie? Britt? Let's go on an outing. Where to? It's a surprise. Okay, that will be nice. Britt told Eddie to be ready at 5 p.m. He's been trying to get ready since 4. He tried on at least 4 outfits so far, and his hair wouldn't lie down. He chose to wear a dark blue shirt, as it's still hot, so he rolled the sleeves up a bit. He picked out black jeans and his only pair of decent black shoes. As he enters the living area, he finds Brett waiting on the couch. He looked amazing. He was wearing black pants with a formal white shirt. Wow, Eddie says as he reaches the couch. I feel so underdressed now. You look amazing. You look amazing too. Then Brett's phone buzzes. Their taxi is waiting downstairs. The taxi is stopped near a big gray stone building. Brett took out his phone from his pocket and showed the lady at the entrance the tickets he bought online. She opens the turnstile for them one by one, and then Eddie sees what Brett planned. They were at the entry to cable cars, which he assumes goes all the way up the mountain. They are shown to a carriage, and as luck would have it, they are the only ones to embark. They take seats facing each other as the car slowly starts to move. Brett was about six years old, the one and only time he ever went up with the cable cars. He has only vague memories of the experience, but he wanted to share the view from the top with Eddie. When the car left the compound and became airborne for the first time, it felt like his stomach stayed behind on the ground. He doesn't have a fear of heights, but this made him feel queasy. Are you okay? Eddie asks as he notices all the color leaving Brett's face. I, I don't know. I don't remember being scared of this. I guess I was too small when I was here last, he says, his hands starting to shake. As the distance between the cart and the ground increases, he can't look anymore. He moves down so he sits on the floor where he doesn't have to see the outside world. Eddie immediately pulls him back onto the seat next to him. The floor is dirty. You will mess up your clothes, he says. Here, lie down so you don't have to see, he says, as he helps Brett to lie sideways with his head on Eddie's lap. Now, just breathe slowly, in and out. You will feel better soon, he says gently. What makes it worse is the fact that they stop mid-air every time a car reached the top or bottom stations to allow passengers to get on and off. Every time it is with a jerking motion that makes their car swing back and forth slightly. Eddie, what if it falls off the cable and we die? Brett asks. Has it ever happened here? Eddie asks. No, but it feels like it's going to, and there's always a first time. Dude, you're such a baby, Eddie laughs. The car reaches the top in half an hour, even though it felt like days to Brett. He is very happy to feel solid ground beneath his feet again. They make their way down a small cobblestone path to a huge observation deck. Eddie is surprised at how many buildings there are, but then remembers the entire mountaintop is flat. A small town could probably fit on here. Britt guides Eddie down a narrow path away from the observation deck. I want to show you something, Brett says. They reach an area away from the people, surrounded by smaller rocks and multicolored bushes all around. Brett walks over to a bush with yellow flowers. See this one? It's rooibos. Remember when you had rooibos tea when we had lunch on the rocks? Eddie kneels down and reaches out to pick a piece off, but... Brett stops him. All the plants here are protected. We're not allowed to pick anything, he explains. There's more than a hundred species of plants growing only here, so they are all considered endangered, Brett continues. He kneels down next to Eddie and tries to recall as many of the names as possible, pointing them out as he talks. Both get up once their knees pain too much, 
and Brett leads Eddie further down the little path until he spots what he's looking for. This is the pride of South Africa, he says, pointing to a huge flower. It's called a protea, Brett adds. Eddie has never seen anything like it. The flower was bigger than his face, and the symmetrical patterns on the inside were so intricate. He leans over to smell it. Nothing. A bit disappointing, I know, Brett says. Guess something can't be beautiful and smell nice at the same time. Eddie throws his best runway pose and says, Except us. Brett laughs as he says, Come on, smooth talker. Let's go get some dinner. They stroll back to the observation area. On the other side of it, there's a stone building with tall chimneys sticking out between all the plants around it. It seems to be right on the edge of the mountain. Brett booked in advance, so they are shown to a table outside, away from the other tables. The view was breathtaking. Beneath them, they could see the entire Cape Town and the ocean beyond. As they sit down, Eddie notices a small island a distance from the mainland. Is that Robin Island? He asks. Brett nods. Wow, it's amazing how far you can see from here. Brett orders a bottle of red wine, as Eddie hasn't tasted any of the famous South African wines yet. They both order steak for mains, and Eddie nearly choked when he saw the price. The waiter doesn't take long to bring them the wine. He pours each of them a glass, then puts the bottle on the table. Brett lifts his glass to Eddie and says, Cheers! They clink the sides together, and then take a sip. Eddie smiles at Brett across the table. Thank you for bringing me here, Brett. It's perfect. <laughs>